In the past decade, there has been a significant push towards developing mini internal combustion engines to address the shortcomings of traditional engines, particularly in terms of design and weight impacting the range and efficiency of vehicles. Among them, the Innovation Engine has introduced a surprising concept, an impressive one-cylinder engine that is smaller by 55% and lighter by 70% compared to traditional combustion engines. As you know, being lighter will have an impact on achieving a longer range. How would the performance of this engine affect our vehicles in the future? Before we begin, please show your support by subscribing and ringing the bell so you won't miss out on any of our exciting content. Now, let's get started with today's video. The E-Rex engine, researched and developed by InEngine recently, is purported to be a two-stroke engine, although this claim is yet to be fully understood. Its primary advantage lies in its remarkable lightweight construction. Furthermore, it is exceptionally quiet, almost to the extent that tests have been conducted, placing a coin atop the engine while it operates. The reduction in noise and vibration, coupled with its compact size, could make the E-Rex a game changer. How does it work and what does it do for the auto industry? In this disclosed engine, we can observe up to eight pistons arranged in an opposed configuration. There are no cylinder heads or crankshafts here. Instead, they're replaced by a complex shaped can that facilitates wheel rotation as the pistons move up and down slopes, causing the cam to rotate accordingly. This setup stands in stark contrast to conventional engine blocks used in internal combustion engines today. Essentially, two of these wave-like components are connected by a common shaft, allowing the forces from all eight pistons to combine and generate a single torque output at both ends of the engine. Theoretically, this design allows for the transmission system to be connected at both ends. With this engine, automotive manufacturers can potentially produce four-wheel drive vehicles with lighter weight and high balance. The ability to connect the transmission systems at both ends stems from the absence of cylinder head cams and valves in this engine. As a result, there's no need for cam belts or cam chains at one end of the engine, making maintenance more accessible and significantly reducing weight. So how does air get in and out of the engine if there aren't any valves? They'll perform a similar task to what two-stroke engines typically do, utilizing sealed intake and exhaust ports that are open and closed by the pistons as the engine slides on the cam. Additionally, it features a fuel injector and a spark plug to ignite the air-fuel mixture as combustion pressure increases. This pressure pushes against the pistons, driving them outward, and as they move, they automatically open the intake and exhaust ports. The four pistons on one side of the engine handle intake air, while the four pistons on the other side deal with exhaust gases. This occurs when both intake and exhaust valves are simultaneously open. Initially, the exhaust port of the engine inside is exposed, allowing exhaust gases to quickly escape the combustion chamber, leaving behind a void called vacuum. This vacuum has a lower pressure than the outside air pressure, so air rushes into the combustion chamber through the intake port. At this point, the upward slope of the cam pushes the pistons back to seal both intake and exhaust ports after they close. The compression stage begins and fuel is injected into the chamber to create a fuel-air mixture combined with compressed air. This cycle repeats as the spark plug ignites, initiating combustion, which creates pressure forcing the pistons to move continuously based on the rotation of the cam, generating torque. With the direct fuel injection system, the absence of intake valves means there won't be issues related to intake valve deposits commonly associated with conventional direct injection engines. This implies fewer drawbacks, which is certainly advantageous. However, we can observe something amiss in this process. It appears that this is not a two-stroke engine as claimed by its designers. Pay attention to the fuel injection and exhaust process. Therefore, it seems this is not a two-stroke engine as advertised. While theoretically feasible, we doubt it'll be manufactured in the near future based on current technology, despite being patented as a two-stroke engine. How impressive is the efficiency of this engine? What's truly impressive about this design is that it operates like a direct fuel-injected two-stroke engine without the typical drawbacks associated with conventional two-stroke engines. A significant advantage is its lack of oil burning, with the oil being separated from the combustion chamber, which is a noteworthy achievement. 
For non-opposed piston engines, the opposing chamber will be located opposite the piston. During the combustion process, energy will be transmitted to the piston, causing it to move beneficially for torque. However, the burnt gas seems to have nowhere to go but to absorb the energy of the combustion process as heat, which will gradually make the engine hotter than ever. On the other hand, the opposed piston design is an efficiency advantage for this engine. Having pistons both above or below or on both sides of the combustion process means more combustion energy will be absorbed, extracted, and converted into useful power or torque, making the opposed piston design more efficient than its non-opposed piston equivalent. A significant advantage of the design in this engine is its ability to have variable compression ratios with a very simple mechanism. This is because the two cam-like components are connected to each other but not in fixed position. Rather, they both sit on the cam grooves and move around them. Therefore, when both pistons meet at the highest center peak, we can achieve maximum compression ratio. Then, if we keep one piston opposing at the same position while the other piston slides down slightly, this reduces the compression ratio slightly. In theory, we can combine this with a low-pressure turbocharger and high-speed acceleration at high engine speeds to achieve high output power. However, at low engine speeds, we still maintain high compression for improved efficiency and responsiveness during acceleration, all thanks to this very simple mechanical arrangement. However, delving deeper into the engine's advantages, a notable feature is the perfect primary and secondary engine balance. Furthermore, the arrangement of opposing pistons ensures that the forces generated by the pistons cancel each other out, leading to smooth motion. Without connecting rods, the engine also achieves perfect secondary balance. Let us now address a common question that makes a direct injection engine without the problems associated with variable compression and excellent balance. Innovation often faces skepticism before gaining acceptance. Furthermore, the long-standing success of conventional crankshaft and piston designs poses a significant challenge to new engine designs. The extensive research and development over more than a century have entrenched conventional designs, making them difficult to replace. If we were to spend another century developing new designs, they might still face criticism and doubt that conventional engine designs offer significantly greater advantages. One crucial reason why most new engine designs encounter failure or have low success rates is that the crankshaft piston design has been present for centuries making it difficult to replace. After hundreds of years of research and development, it is challenging to replace it. The conventional engine design holds an advantage over the new one of in-engine in terms of torque. This is because the crankshaft can be heavy and occupy significant space inside the engine as it rotates. But fundamentally, it's just a lever that amplifies the force generated during fuel combustion. Therefore, vehicles are always going to have good torque output, even at lower speeds. However, with this new engine, you can see it's arranged in a rotary fashion inside the engine and has no levers. With all eight pistons operating at full power, it generates small torque moments, which accumulate into a large total torque output when combined. In fact, this engine, claimed to be a 500cc engine, produces 150 newton meters of torque. It has indeed made a significant impression as we began to delve into its details. However, this maximum torque isn't defined to occur within a specific range of engine speeds based on basic physics and observation. We suspect that the maximum torque appears very high in the RPM range and at low torque RPMs. To visualize this better, let's compare a single cylinder 600cc engine to a four cylinder 600cc engine. In a single cylinder, we have a large lever and a large piston, so each power stroke generates a considerable amount of torque. That's why we have good torque even across the entire RPM range on the four cylinders. The engine has smaller levers and smaller pistons, meaning we get many small torque pulses, and we have to accumulate or stack up many of these small explosions to create some significant torque for the engine. This is why a conventional four-cylinder 600cc engine has a lower low RPM performance. Now, you can imagine how the torque curve would look if we had eight pistons and extremely small levers in a 500cc package. It's like this is a very creative design, very interesting, and it also feels like there's genuine passion behind the project they're researching. And this engine has even greater potential in certain fields. The clearest indication of this is the installation of the engine and driving around with a Mazda MX-5, as demonstrated by the designers. 
We got to see the footage of the engine in the car, someone operating the engine, and then the car driving around. What truly sets this apart is that the new engine only weighs 77 pounds and has been patented as a two-stroke engine that can effortlessly propel a Mazda thanks to the 120 horsepower provided at atmospheric pressure, no turbo, just pure power and a package only 40 centimeters long. When a car is fully equipped with this engine, it'll create a four-wheel drive vehicle with an incredibly light weight, which will make a significant impact on the global car market. So, what if it was combined with a hydrogen technology that's gradually shaken up the market? The issue here lies with the significant centrifugal boost set in the engine compartment, providing compressed air to the engine. Whether it's turbo or supercharger, it's still a forced induction, certainly not atmospheric pressure. And there's no official explanation. It's quite clear that the engine struggles to move the car without forced induction. A conventional 500cc engine could easily achieve 120 horsepower with the help of forced induction, such as a turbocharger. So it seems that this engine doesn't necessarily offer greater power potential than a conventional engine. Especially when stationary, the original 1.6 engine found in Mazda MX-5 NA and NB models produces about 116 to 136 horsepower, depending on the market and generation. While it might not be the fastest car, it still provides decent acceleration from a standstill due to low RPM torque. Furthermore, what's even more absurd is that on the in-engine website, they even go further with this issue and claim that their engine has double the power stroke events per cylinder compared to a two-stroke engine and four times that number compared to a four-stroke engine. In another section, they also claim that their combustion chambers have two combustion events per revolution. All this seems to be unverified as they're comparing an eight-piston four-cylinder engine to a conventional single-piston single-cylinder engine. When we balance the number of cylinders, the inherent meaninglessness of this argument becomes very apparent. The engine combusts fuel every 180 degrees of rotation on the wave-like mechanism which perfectly aligns with the combustion timing of a conventional four-stroke four-cylinder engine. So we certainly don't have two fuel combustion events in one combustion chamber as they've announced. It seems like they're considering the entire engine as a single combustion chamber, which really doesn't make any sense. But what's important is that we still have one power stroke event generating torque every time the engine rotates 180 degrees, just like a conventional four-stroke four-cylinder engine. And with eight pistons in the engine, the friction of the piston rings is equivalent to that of a V8. Therefore, the potential performance gains from the opposed piston design may be offset by the very high piston ring friction. And this high friction level could potentially compensate for the performance benefits achieved through the opposed piston design. What challenge will this change have? We don't consider this to be a proactive emissions reduction activity. But the company is indeed striving to meet the European 2025 emission standards on their two-stroke engine. So it seems like they're heading the right direction to accomplish what they've collaborated with others to help meet current and future emission standards. In the current market, there are many places where this technology could essentially be applied immediately because automakers are placing more emphasis on providing significantly lighter weight, good power, and ultimately, longer range capabilities. In 2021, they actually declared that this engine's 55% smaller and 70% lighter than any four-stroke engine. However, they're not attempting to replace every internal combustion engine, and that's something you should support, as while manufacturers are transitioning to or being forced to transition to electric vehicles, internal combustion engines will continue for many generations to provide a strong stepping stone for the development of electric vehicles and possibly even longer with the development of carbon-neutral fuel sources. Indeed, there are very few automakers willing to license this patent and start using a completely new engine at the time. While companies like General Motors or Toyota have their own engines, despite the benefits, why would they go and license from another company just to develop a new engine and work on it for years before finally putting it into production when the lifespan of internal combustion engines is ending? In some cases, mandating electric vehicles to run solely on batteries could be harmful to the environment because the mining required to obtain these rare minerals is heavily concentrated in China as well as in some other countries. The labor force employed in mining them is indeed very challenging, and these types of batteries tend to be extremely heavy. By manufacturing a heavier electric vehicle battery pack, you're actually making it less efficient because it adds more weight to it. In-engine's concept revolves around having a range-extending engine, meaning you have a much smaller battery pack occupying about 90% of the driving activities people typically undertake 
like going to the grocery store, commutes to work, doing errands, and lots more. Then there's a small engine up front that can kick in and provide power to the battery when you embark on longer journeys or when needed. This reduces the overall weight of the vehicle, reducing the amount of battery needed. Ultimately, this means the minerals you're mining could be used across four or five vehicles instead of just one. While vehicles are becoming much more efficient at minimizing carbon emissions from the combustion process, this engine addresses that issue because the automotive industry is indeed considering using hydrogen as fuel for the range extender engine. We see a lot of benefits here, and I believe you could still get cheaper, lighter, and much more efficient vehicles with normal driving capabilities like we have with the current ICE. In-Engine's pioneering one-stroke engine technology represents a watershed moment in the automotive industry's quest for emissions reduction and efficiency optimization. By transcending conventional paradigms and embracing innovation, In-Engine navigates the complex interplay between environmental imperatives, market dynamics, and technological advancement. As the automotive landscape evolves towards electrification, In-Engine's holistic approach underscores the enduring relevance of ICE's as a transitional technology, ensuring its seamless transition towards a sustainable mobility ecosystem. Until this engine's applied in practice, would you choose it for daily travel? We hope this video provided you with a sense of relaxation. If it resonated with you, kindly show your support by liking the video and joining the Tesla Car World family through subscribing to our channel. Be sure you don't miss out on any of our fantastic content by hitting that bell icon. Your feedback and time are immensely appreciated. Thanks for watching, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Until then, stay safe and enjoy life.